just want to be like Kendrick when I grow up, okay? I just want to escape from the world for five years, be like YOLO DOLO, do y'all, and when I come back, shake the world. Okay. Hey, hey, creators. Welcome back to the studio. I'm Aramis, the artist. Good morning, good evening. How y'all doing? It's evening for me, y'all, okay? So I know from the last vlog, we were waiting to see the earth sign prints. It's about that time. I am super excited. I'm here in the studio. So if you are new here, first of all, welcome, boo. Your girl is out here in Seattle, Washington. Um, I paint large scale acrylic cosmic goddesses, okay? But y'all, you know what? I'm actually gonna be dibbling dabbling back into some of my abstract work. I'm gonna have to share. I used to do like abstract work in the past. So I love, I love all style of art, all sorts of things. But right now I'm working on my Zodiac series where I painted all 12 of the astrological signs. I get my prints done out here in Washington at Bellevue Fine Art Reproductions. Love them. I know if you aren't new here, you like, girl, if you talk about Scott one more time, I know, I know, <laughs> I know. Your girl out here playing favorites, okay? But like, y'all, nothing just beats like good quality, okay? And good customer service too. Sorry. <laughs> okay, let me get y'all set up to show you some of um, what's going on. These are where the Leo prints, actually, I think by the time you're seeing this, these are gone. So we're, we're all done with uh, the fire signs. That was Leo, Aries, Aries and Sagittarius. Uh, actually, y'all, my mom is an Aries. It was just her birthday. She was living her best life. I'm super excited she's coming out here for the show. Um, but if you are new here, pretty much every time I have these prints available, I open them and show y'all the process. Uh, so you should check out some of the other vlogs. I'll link those here where you can see where I open the other ones. Y'all, okay, okay. You know what? I think this is the first time. Yeah, this is the first time. Ooh, nice, and we got three extras. See how they do? See how they do? Oh, these are great. Sit those to the side because those are the bonus. Get over here. <laughs> Get over here. Oh, y'all, Taurus. Okay, this is Taurus. This is one of the first pieces that I did. Look at her. It's the box braids for me. <laughs> yes. Let me stop. See, when I get to breathing, swallow. Get get that spit back. Get that spit back. Uh-uh. This is giving the vibes. This is giving the vibes. Yup. Yup, exquisite. Exquisite. So just giving it a double check. I don't know if you all remember from the last vlog, we had a little hiccup with Leo, but they reprinted them. They were perfect. They went out to the customers. All was well. This looks fantastic. This is Taurus. I believe she's the only sign that is a square dimension, so. If you a Taurus boo, then we did something extra special for y'all. And I am so excited with how this looks. This looks absolutely phenomenal. So those are solid. And now we are gonna move on to the other ones. Nice, and y'all speaking of Taurus, so the size for that is, um, I think these are, oh wait. Oh, these were some small ones. All oh, right, because the ones I'm actually doing, I think it's 30 by 30. Yeah, yeah, so those were the smaller ones. Those were some extras that he gave me for free. And then these other little smaller extras. So stay tuned to the end. I'm gonna let y'all know how you can get these. Let's see. Um, maybe I'll just give these to my patrons. <laughs> look, no, look, we got, I know, I know, I, I, I love my patrons. I love them, I so appreciate them. Um, I just love like gifting them with extra stuff, y'all. But I get it, everybody's not able to join a Patreon community. So maybe we'll just we'll just do a little special something um, for. So we have four of these that's this smaller size. Oh, then we got like a whole stack of these other little ones. Thank you, Scott. I don't know if you watch, if you, do you watch my YouTube videos? <laughs> if you do, thank you, Scott. I'm gonna have to let him know. I'm gonna send him an email. Oh my God, look at these, look at these. <laughs> Oh my God, isn't that a cute little something? Oh y'all, it's a whole stack of these. We might have to, we might have to really do some, okay, yeah, no, like this this stack is going to the Patriots. Like we gonna, I don't know, we gonna figure it out. But if you all wanna come to the show, 
You're invited, boo. You're invited. AOHammer.com slash Zodiac. That's where you can RSVP. It's absolutely free. It's open to the public. Would love to see you there. But there are uh, there is a, a VIP option where all the proceeds is going to Kai Tita, an organization I'm working with in Haiti. Absolutely love them. I'm gonna drop all the information below. But uh, maybe we'll do a little we'll do a little giveaway. Okay, stay tuned for that. We're gonna see what pops off. All right, let's move on to the next signs. Next signs. Next signs. Oh my God, I get so many goodies. So many goodies. Mm, yeah, see. Okay, so see, this is Virgo and Virgo and Capricorn. Can't wait, can't wait. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, she's all she's already freaking out. Okay. Y'all, Capricorn is one of my favorite. She's one of my favorite. I'm a Gemini. Okay, y'all probably figured that out. Um <laughs> If you knew, you might not know. Girls Gemini, June 5th. So the actual entire weekend of the show is like also slash birthday bash for your girl, okay? So I'm a Gemini, but I love this Capricorn painting. Y'all gonna see why. Okay. We just need to take a minute with her. Y'all, if this ain't some queenly shit, then I don't know what is. Sis is a whole goddess, not a half. Oh. Oh. I'ma need us to stop. That's top notch. that is underneath is Virgo. I'ma lift this, I ain't gonna look, I'ma let y'all look first, okay? Let me know in the comments what you think. I'ma come right back. looking right. I love Virgo too. I, I So you can't see it in the print. Oh, actually a little bit you can. I'm gonna show y'all this in one of the originals, maybe later when we get home and I show y'all the, the original of Virgo. Um, in her halo, I use like this iridescent, one of Golden's Interference. I think it's like Interference Green and Blue. So at certain angles it looks green, other angles it looks blue. Absolutely love that. So with Virgo being like the Virgin, I wanted her to have these like Mary, sort of Virgin Mary vibes. So I put like this halo effect around her. You can see it very subtly in the print. I'm seeing it here now, but um, yeah, you can definitely see the original. Can't wait to show her on the show. Y'all, let me, hold on, hold on. Let's lift her up. Let's lift her up. Oh my God, overjoyed. I am just <laughs> overjoyed by how amazing those look. Y'all, and look, what's the irony of the Capricorn and the and the Virgo candles being right in front of me? We gonna talk about the candles at another point, okay? Like, people been asking me, when are the candles coming back? They are coming back. They coming back soon. I was talking about that in my Instagram stories. I'll probably link some information below if you are curious, but you know, with the candles, they taught me so much. I am now calling the candles my let it go candle, okay? Because if you watch the vlog about the journey it was to turn my painting into a candle, it was crazy, okay? And I was so frustrated. And now that I look back on it, it was like, because I was trying to do too much. And I'm just, I keep learning this lesson over and over and over again. And I think that's why it keeps coming up because I clearly haven't learned. And what has been beautiful about this time planning this show I've been nervous and I've been scared, but I think it's because 
this is the time where I'm actually about to start practicing the let it go, okay? It feels so scary to relinquish this sort of control when it's something that's so important to you and just like means so much, but the universe continues to affirm to me like, boo, when you let us handle it, we can do it even better and even more magical than what you could have ever thought of. So I'm learning to let it go. I'm just gonna let it, let it be whatever it's gonna be. And the people who are really resonating with the art that I'm putting out in the world, I know that they are gonna be here because y'all are here and I'm just so grateful for y'all. And I'm also understanding y'all, the new works that I'm working on, <coughs> it's about to get real strange, okay? Your girl is about to just really shine her light and really look express all of her deep metaphysical esoteric ideas okay but i also have a real understanding that that stuff isn't in high commercial demand you know like some of the stuff i mean i'm gonna just be real it might go over people's head people might not understand it especially if you have like a deep christian background you like what the hell is this shit she do like what what does this mean, you know? And I know just with a lot of different religious backgrounds, there can be a, a lot of fear when there's different images and different symbols that you don't understand. And so, but I'm not even on no journey out here to like educate people on that. I feel like the people who resonate with, with the work will come here, you know? Um, but I feel like my video about art and spirituality definitely let me know that y'all, y'all ready. Y'all ready, y'all here with me and I'm excited. Oh, and speaking of, I am officially on book four of the law of one content the raw material your girl been burning through i actually haven't been burning through i feel like i've actually been been taking my time with it because the content is so dense and so rich and so kind of hard to understand like if you if you aren't ready for that i wouldn't encourage you to start there the law of one i wouldn't recommend it for the new seeker okay um but i've been on this journey for a while and maybe i'll maybe i'll talk about that too let's shift let's shift honestly that can be a whole video in itself just talking about my spiritual journey and i definitely want to share that at some point but yeah you know y'all know i'll be lost okay if you missed that video check out that video where i talk about being lost a lost artist but you know i think day by day i'm becoming found of uh, getting clear on what i want the end result to be yeah i'm not out here for anybody's entertainment <laughs> you know like i know i can be entertaining <laughs> but i truly want to be here um as to help with your inspiration and transformation. You know, like I, I wanted to go deeper than just like, oh, me, me like documenting this journey or like entertaining y'all. But one, I am documenting my journey. I thought it was really cool about Andy Warhol's diaries. I'm like, oh, this is cool. Like this is actually my, my visual diaries of my creative journey. But it's also like, having an understanding that people are watching this and that I am making an impact just from sharing my story. But I'm super, super happy because I'm getting so clear and I'm like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I ain't, I ain't about to worry about any of the stuff that people typically worry about in this social media world. It's truly not about that for me. I don't care y'all. Like I'm super grateful that it's like over 5,000 of y'all here, but at the end of the day, all I need is about a solid 500 people. Okay, like all I need is like a thousand true fans, you know, and there's a book called that I, I believe like a thousand true fans. Um, and that's that's really what I'm about. If I make a deep impact on some people, I'm cool at the end of the day. And it's not even about being a YouTuber or being a content creator. For me, I'm, I'm an artist. Okay, so if you if you ever see me out somewhere, if you ever describe me to somebody, please don't describe me as your favorite YouTuber. Please describe me as, as one of your favorite artists. That that truly means the world to me. To one, be your favorite anything just like means the world to me, but I, I'm also getting so clear that I definitely wanna make sure that my art is at the at the front and center of what I'm doing. So if y'all ready, if y'all ready, let's go. I think by the next time I see y'all, we are gonna be at the house. I want Andy to, to explain a little bit more of the frames that he's been working on and how he put those together. And then I'll see y'all back in the studio. If you follow me on the gram, then you're going to get the joke. Okay, you going you going to get it and what happened with the squirrel. All right, y'all, we back at the Christmas and Andy has been diligently hard at work. Let me show you what he's been up to. Clearly y'all might be noticing that I'm recording some of this stuff out of order because your girl got her braids in. Next vlog, you'll see as to why, but let me take y'all Andy's shop and see how we cut these frames. Okay, look, don't judge our house and we won't judge y'all house. Okay, don't come in here with the shenanigans. 
So pretty much Andy is getting set up. These are the pieces that we got from Home Depot. Okay, next time y'all see Andy's uh, workshop, it's gonna be clean, right babe? Nope. Nope, nope, I have no plans to clean the workshop in, in the foreseeable future. Okay. These are the subframes for Gemini. Mm -hmm. And you cut these, so pretty much you started with this type of wood and you cut this into strips. Mm -hmm. It's about ripping, yeah. You ripped him. Mm -hmm. So cross cut goes this way, rip cut goes this way. Okay. So what we need still are the subframe pieces for Gemini, which I think I'm gonna make these and we'll just call it Gemini subframe cut already. And then we need stretcher bars for Aquarius and subframe for Aquarius. For stretcher bars, I've been using about a two inch, two inches. So two inches of this will be the subframe for Aquarius. And the remaining one inch piece, give or take, is gonna be the subframe for Aquarius. I always take the rounded edges off. As you can see, I already took the rounded edge off this one. I'm gonna take both the rounded edges off of this one and the rounded edge off there. And then I'm gonna uh, do that cut down here to give us a, the two inch piece and the one inch piece. So that will account for stretcher bar and subframe for Aquarius. Okay, now that he has shaven off all the sides and got the wood nice and smooth, that's actually our way of saving money because if you buy pieces that are already pre-cut, then they're actually more expensive. So we buy two by fours. Is it, is it two by fours or two by sixes, babe? These are two by fours. Two by fours. And then he cuts them and makes them nice and smooth. And that helps get them straight because the thinner pieces you buy at the store, they're typically like curved or wonky or like warpy, warpy or wonky. And $2 a piece. I had to tie up my hair because we don't want no wood dust in the locks, okay? In the in the roots, in the root. Okay, now he's about to cut these and make the two inch stretcher bar pieces and the one inch subframe. We're gonna break that down a little bit more a little later. This was the saw y'all we got off uh offer up. Everything in here. Everything, everything. Everything is or Craigslist. Offer up Craigslist, the side of the road, something, a gift, like y'all. The blessings overflow. Was this fifty bucks? This saw? No, no, more like a hundred. Oh, it was a hundred. Okay. Do you have one that was fifty? Maybe the one behind you. Oh yeah, that one. We had to let that one go. That's why it was fifty bucks. Hey. Uh, Talk my then keep it honest, keep it independent. I hear them hating, but that's only cause they inconsistent. He said the weapon wouldn't prosper, now they wouldn't form. I'm by the golf, I hit the middle and it's good and warm. I got the million dollar motors, I've been getting to it. I got the dead boost your ego when you listen to it. I know they waiting on the fall, but I doubt that. They don't measure from either edge because we want the seam of the, the edge of the painting to be in the middle of the molding. So if we need 102 inches, I gotta put the tape measure somewhere right in there. And if this dimension here were 102 inches, then it, it would fit around the painting instead of have the on top of the painting. Gotcha. So 102 inches needs to be actually about in here somewhere. And that also is what gives you how much of the painting is covered up. I'm trying to show you something. Something that's an earthquake coming in every 30 minutes like a earthquake. Shake some. Don't forget to change the angle. Tip for the people. Don't cut your tip, man. Something that's an earthquake. I don't need them to both be exactly 102. Because, like I said, we got wiggle room. All this is wiggle room. What I need is for these to be the exact same length so that once we made all four together, we don't have any weird, wonky trapezoid shapes. So instead of taking out the tape measure and trying to nail that measurement, I just make sure that these edges are lined up. So I just run my finger across it, and if I feel a lip, it's not lined up. It should feel smooth. So I squeeze. Oftentimes, these are not exactly straight. They're bowed. So 
So I just give them a squeeze to just line them up down the edge. And then I take my marking knife and then give it a nice little line right across. Before I move it, measure twice. Nest it! And now I don't cut right on that line. I cut next to the line and then move it just a little bit in closer to get that last nib. The moment of truth is when you line them up again. Sometimes just that little bit of microscopic bit you took off was a, a bit too much. So my top piece is a little bit longer. So whichever one's longer, I put it back on the saw and then just kiss it again, just like, like, like you saw me do. I just give it a little kiss on that blade just to take a little bit more off. For the last check, I actually bring it out onto the ground. We have a cherry blossom tree <laughs> in the front of our house. Curvature in them. And as you can see, I'm still long here. So, so now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna take more off of this one. You don't mm -hmm. want that much of a, of a gap between the two. And the reason it's more visible now is because we got them laying down and pinched together. Over there, it's just not, there's too much curvature, like as you can see. Like... Now that is close enough. If you touch that compared to the last one, it's not exact, but it's oh, yeah, much that's nice. close. That's nice. And... Oh my God, y'all, everything is in bloom in the backyard. Oh, I didn't even show y'all these. Look at the, look at the babies. Aren't they beautiful? Oh, love them. Y'all, we got this giant apple tree. <laughs> Can you see this huge apple tree that's over here? When we had first moved in, there were so many apples. So when you walk under here, this is where we are setting up my backyard sanctuary. So if you follow me on the gram, then you saw Andy was getting the land ready. We pretty much like dug all this up and burned it. That's just a quick way to clear the land. But since we have delayed, there's already been grass and plants that have grown back. This is where we did the photo shoot for the candles. It's a mess right now. Okay, look, we gonna have to rinse it out. I haven't had it covered just cause we've been working back here. It's just gonna be like my backyard haven. And this is probably gonna be the place where we do the other photo shoots for a very special project that I'm thinking about y'all. But really I'm just super excited because I want, I want my artwork to be a part of people's just self care ritual. You know, just like their whole, their whole journey. Y'all gotta see what's going on right. Look at, look at this. Look at this, it's crazy right now. It is cray cray. Look at all this overgrowth. It's a work in progress. When you come from up out of here, y'all see this is what Andy does, okay? We have a fire pit and I was like, get it off the grass because it's gonna kill the grass. That's exactly what it did, killed the grass. All right, y'all, so Andy showed us a little bit of how he is prepping that wood. That's what he's making for the subframes. So now we are going to, what are we about to do? Um, we are going to... Let me tell the people. So what were we doing? Okay, right. So he's pretty much assembling the frame in two separate pieces. We got the subframe, which is what y'all just saw him cutting, and then the main frame, which has the ornate background, like the actual ornate design on it. So those two pieces, we put those together and then we glue them and sand them. So right now he's about to show you all gluing those pieces together for the main frame. Since Gemini is a horizontal landscape orientation, I like to put the nail holes on uh, here because that'll be on the top and bottom, less visible to the viewer. Oh, now he got a brush, y'all, because I talked about him in the last vlog. I still use my finger. Do you like the silicone brush? Uh, for bigger stuff than this. So I can tell that this one is canted a bit, mm -hmm. and I think that's because there's a dip here. Uh huh. So you what I want to do, yeah, if you could, there's a spare brick behind you. And once you put that brick head in the center, you should take some of the bowing out. Boing! Yeah, that was better. And I'll just be able to flex the rest with my fingers. And then this is one where I usually need to weight it. 
So as you can see, like when you push down, uh -huh. it aligns. See that? Yeah. So I'm gonna add down, I'm gonna line them up first in this direction, make sure in this direction it's good. Uh -huh. And then I squeeze here to make sure that it's flush along there. And then I pull in just a little bit more. And I usually like to see a little squeeze out. I don't see any squeeze out right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply a little more glue. Okay, go ahead and apply that. Just a little bit. I do not mind squeeze out. It lets me know I have a good, healthy layer in there. I don't want any gaps. And the glue is never to act as a filler. It's just there to create a bond between the wood. Now we start seeing some squeeze out. So I'm checking multiple dimensions here. I'm checking to make sure that both of these are at the same height by feeling to make sure that these flats are flush. I shouldn't feel a lip here. I'm also making sure that this one isn't twisted. This one wants to twist in this direction, which means I might be flush right here, but by the time you look down here, it might be twisted. You also look in that corner to make sure those two corners line up the right way. And then lastly, once you feel like you're close, I just come in, it's not like there's a whole lot of adjustments, it just kind of lets me know how close we are. And I, we're pretty close on 90. So now I wipe some of this squeeze out away, just to make sure that there aren't any actual gaps. Sometimes that glue can hide a gap, but there aren't any there, fortunately. So I'm gonna go ahead and commit to this position by squeezing nice and firmly Doing one final check on my corners, grabbing the nail gun, make sure your fingers are safe, and I'd usually do three. And there we are. So since there are only three little nails like right in here, it might still have the desire to twist. If you come in close there, you see when it twists, you see that gap open up? Mm -hmm. We do not want that. Is that coming through on the camera? How that gap opens up like that based on these small movements? Yeah, a little bit. We do not want any of that to be open like this. We want it closed like that. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I center up that brick and I come in and I put something heavy to push down right here. Okay. Like a gallon of paint or a paint jug or something. Yeah, we want to wipe off this glue because if that glue hardens there, we ain't going to be able to get down in them cracks to get it off later. And anything else will be covered when you prime and paint. So. Take the jug, there we are. Okay, how long do we let that sit? Let's give it some hours. Some hours? At least two. Okay. I try to give it four or five. Okay, so now you flipped over the main frame, which is the ornate piece, and now you're starting to attach the subframe pieces. Okay, you got the glue on there. Mm -hmm. mainframe y'all that's what Andy just assembled this is the mainframe here so once we attach those two pieces this is what it looks like see this is the mainframe this is the subframe he glued those pieces together and now we are about to fill any holes with the wood filler mm -hmm. and I usually pre-sand before going to a fill but we're gonna try it out see if we can skip a step oh now you being lazy no So just the wood filler. So always overfill so that you can sand down to flush. First one you just want to kind of mash it in and then come back and put, leave a little heaping amount on there so that when you sand, you can bring it down and be sure you're going to be flush. And I just go along this whole seam here. Focusing on knots like this, you can see how all those gaps in that knot, all those are just filling in with that filler right there.
like I wanna see her form. Tell me what you thought, yeah. Hey, you pay me what I'm owed, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All this money on me. Yeah, yeah. Cash rules all around me. I just finished sanding. Y'all, it's been a journey, okay? Y'all, behind me are the frames. <sighs> we are literally this close to being done. I'm super excited. This is actually gonna be like the last kind of decent day that the weather is gonna behave before I have to go out of town, do all the different things. So we are really trying to get down to crunch time. Okay, look, your girl got her hair wrapped up because if you ever tried to get anything out of locks, then you know the struggle, okay? So we got two scarves. <laughs> we got two scarves, got the locks on lock. Okay, but can we talk about Kenny? Let's talk, okay? I just wanna be like Kendrick when I grow up, okay? I just wanna escape from the world for five years, be like YOLO DOLO, do y'all, and when I come back, shake the world. Okay, like, I was just listening to a podcast by Halise. Okay, the bluebirds are going crazy in the backyard, y'all, so. That's all the noise that you're probably gonna hear. I love Halise, I'm actually one of her patrons. Um, she has a podcast and she had another artist on there, a writer actually, who's also creates content on YouTube. I think it's, I think her name was It's Radish Time, was like her, her YouTube name. And Halise had asked her, what does she define success as? <laughs> And she says success is when she doesn't have to be on Twitter anymore. Like when literally she can go away, create something, come back and present it to the world and her audience and community will still be there. And that, that resonated with me on such a deep level. And like it honestly made me think about Kendrick. Like if, if y'all go to Kendrick Lamar's Instagram, there's like three posts. He was, he's like, yeah, no, I'm not. I'm, but that's also the benefit of having a label, you know, and actually he's he's leaving TDE soon, okay? I, I see, I see what they're doing out there with PG Lang, okay? Clearly your girl is a big TDE and KDOT fan over here, love them all. When you have a label, when you have a gallery, you they are taking care of a lot of that marketing for you. And so what I'm realizing, so that I don't get caught up in the comparison trap, because y'all know how we can be, we could be like, man, why can't I just go ghost? Like, why do I have to be out here posting and showing up and doing all these things? If y'all remember in the beginning, k Dot was out there. He was on the cover of every single magazine. He was touring. He put in the work so that he could step away, you know? And so I'm like, you know what? That's his journey, you know? And it's like, you can't really compare your day one to somebody days 117, you know? But... If y'all are a K-Dot fan, let's chop it up in the comments. Have y'all seen his new track, Heart Part 5, okay? Tell me what y'all think. What y'all think about the different faces? I ain't gonna give all my feedback. Let me know in the comments what y'all think about that. Um, maybe we'll chop it up with the patrons or the Create Day if there's like some big Kendrick fans out there. But yeah, it's just like, when I think about it, when I think about my artistic career and how I wanna show up, sometimes I do feel like, man, like, I'm literally doing so much, you know, like we, y'all just saw it. We building the frames, sanding them, priming them, painting them, on top of me painting the original paintings, on top of me marketing it, you know, sending out the newsletters, doing all the things and, but man, I'm so grateful for the team. Like, Nalisha and Shannon have been coming through, so I have had the opportunity to make sure that I'm staying in my zone of genius, okay? Making sure that I stay high vibe so that I can show up and be here with y'all and connect with the community in the DMs and the comments and email. It's like so, so wonderful connecting with y'all. And that's why I'm remembering, like, in the midst of all of this, like, when I think, like, man, sometimes I just want to be able to just focus on the creative process. It's still just so beautiful beautiful when I just like read y'all messages. Man, especially, I don't know, by the, I think by the time y'all seen this, y'all have heard the news that the Patreon tiers are changing and y'all, that was scary. That was scary to be like, yeah, we're, we're changing things up. We're pulling things back a little bit so that I can dedicate more to my work. But the patrons was like, girl, we ain't here for no green cards. We here for you, boo. And I was like, <laughs> I'm like, that is what I needed to hear. And I'm just, 
I'm just so grateful and I remember like whenever I do want to retreat, connecting with my audience and connecting with my community just reminds me why I'm even here and, and why I'm even showing up, you know? And it's, and it's truly to remind y'all of your freedom and your liberation and remind you that you are a creator as well and you can create any aspect of your life that you define that's in alignment with you. Getting in my TED Talk vibe, I'm feeling the TED Talk vibe. Actually, I think, yes, the TED Talk has been done. I am gonna link it below. That's the live stream, y'all. So I think the live stream was like, maybe like four or five hours or something. I'm gonna drop the live stream link below and give y'all some timestamps where you can go straight to my talk. All the talks are amazing though, so I do recommend that y'all check them all out if you can. But really though, I, I want people to know that it literally doesn't matter where you come from, you can create the life that you want to if you really, really, truly, truly believe that you can. And of course, if you put it in work, you know? And so right now, we in that season, we in that season of putting in that work, making things pop, making a shake, and that's cool, okay? We don't we don't have to compare ourselves to anybody out here. The other thing that I had, that I, I think I had, com yeah, I did. I had commented on the podcast with Halise and It's Radish Time that, uh, I know that's not her name, but that was like her, her YouTube name. I think I had said like, Tweets probably don't bring in the coin, and they don't, y'all. Like, we be thinking like, oh, well, I, I have to be on Twitter, I have to be on Instagram, I have to be on TikTok, I have to be on YouTube. Like, figure out what are your most income generating activities, you know? And I'm realizing posting on Instagram is not, okay? Now, I see that posting in my stories can be, oh, it's a beautiful, beautiful hummingbird dancing around. I can, I see that posted in my stories are because I feel like, I feel like y'all in my stories too. You know, like the people who find me on YouTube, who go over to my Instagram, y'all like, okay, we waiting on a new video. While we waiting on the next video, let's see what she up to on her story. So it's like, it's so dope just seeing y'all over there. So I'm like, okay, cool. Maybe like posting on Instagram and doing all this other random stuff isn't the income generating activities. What, what does that really look like, you know? And so getting clear on what that is, is something that I've really just been trying to make sure that I'm focusing my energy on so that I'm not trying to do everything and so that I'm not getting burned out, okay? So it's like, if success to me looks like being able to go away and create something and be able to come back and my audience is still there, okay, cool, how can we start creating that now? How can I start educating my audience that what I'm creating isn't content, I'm creating art. So like get, get excited about the art that I'm making, not the video that I'm about to upload. You know what I mean? That's really what I'm trying to cultivate. With all that being said, y'all, this is what we gonna do. This has been a vlog. I'm like, let's not try to do too much in this one video. Another video video is gonna be coming in the following months where I literally break down what we did for the frames and how we made that possible. And by the time that video goes live, we'll have even more information that we can share with y'all. By that time, the show will be done. We'll have just so much more information that we can share. And I can make just like one dedicated video that's completely committed to the frame. So get excited for that, y'all. If y'all are down to ride, link up with your girl hop on over to the blog that's where you can sign up for the newsletter and listen to my blog cast where your girl chit and chat and rant a whole lot more if y'all really down for the, for the chitty chat vlogs <laughs> chitty chat chitty chat vlogs <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video let me know in the comments especially if y'all some k-dot fans let me know down in the chat so that we can chat it up thank you again so much for watching this video and remember if you liked it like it and i'll see you all next week what? Why is my throat dry? Like, she sounding like she got a lisp.